Hey, Ryan. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us here. Uh, take a few minutes this morning to talk with one of the newest inductees into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame and current general manager and VP of basketball operations with the Anna Fever, Tamika Catchings. Uh, we'll get started with questions for Tamika. At halftime, she'll have her, her new banner unveiled here in Banker's Life Fieldhouse. So it's going to be a wonderful day so we can get started with questions. If anybody has any, you can raise your hand or send me a note in the chat. Uh, Doug, I'm going to start us off. Hey, Catch. Good to see you, my friend. Hey, Dougie. Uh, what, what has this last week or so been like for you? And just the whole thing of the Hall of Fame uh, and what it meant to you to be inducted into Naismith. Oh my goodness! It's been uh, it's been a whirlwind. I can't uh, can't lie. I wouldn't even say the last week. Literally, like the last month, just getting prepared for it, and then going into last weekend, just what it meant, uh, just to have my family there. You know, I think the biggest thing we've all been dealing with COVID and haven't been able to see our families, haven't been able to travel, and being able to finally be able to celebrate the Hall of Fame after waiting for the whole year. And my dad, who last year probably wouldn't have been able to attend, uh, with him being able to come and put the jacket on me, just the whole weekend overall, it's just an inspiration. You know, it's an inspiration, obviously being here in Indianapolis and a lot of the kids that we, we get to serve every single day through Catch the Stars. And then of course our players here with the fever, you know, just to come back and bring a brought the trophy in this morning and the ring and the jacket, you know, just for the halftime celebration. And, you know, they're walking by and I'm like, look, this could be you one day. So, you know, I think definitely being able to, to, uh, to be an inspiration. And if I can ask a follow-up, I know how competitive you are. I can only imagine how not happy you are with the start of the season that the fever have gone off to. How do you balance? I mean, you're a young team still, but how do you balance that with your competitiveness and wanting doing everything, so to speak? Oh my goodness, Dougie, you know, it's hard. Um, you know, after the game, what, Friday, I was really, really disappointed. You know, I think with a young team, some of the challenges and with a young team and a new team and, you know, and a new coach and uh, just a lot of new, a lot of brand new. Um, one thing that you have to realize is the next morning when I woke up yesterday and it's like, okay, going back through the game, reviewing it in my head, you know, of course, watching tape and watching the film. It's like, we are doing a lot of really good things. We just have to be better. We have to be better in moments down the stretch. We have to be willing and ready to win games. And, you know, you see some teams where they're afraid to lose rather than playing to win. And I think that the, that was the case for Friday's game. It's almost like a fear of what the what if. And so that's the challenge that I told our team. I'm like, we have a really good team. We have great players. We put together, I think from a culture standpoint, we put together the right players in the locker room. Uh, Bernadette Hattar, Betty, I mean, she's been doing phenomenal the last two games that she's played. And every day, you know, she'll continue to get better, getting in a lineup. You can't really focus on the players that aren't with us. You know, Aaliyah will be a great addition when, when she's able to get on the court. But for the players that are on the court, Every single possession, no matter how many minutes you're playing, you have to come on the court with the mentality of, I would do whatever it takes for this team to win. And, 
I can't do it sitting across the court, looking at the bench, you know, and screaming, thank God for the mask, but screaming my head off, you know, trying to, trying to encourage and inspire and motivate. But, you know, it is good to, to see that we continue to get better. Every game we've gotten better. And, you know, so today going against Washington, it's going to be a big challenge. You know, they're coming off a very, a very big win against New York. And of course, Tina Charles was a little fired up to go against the Liberty, but you know, I think for us, we have to come out and we got to stay focused for 40 minutes. Thanks, Catch. Thanks, Dougie. Thanks so much, Doug. Uh, Scott Agnes. <laughs> hey, Catch. Hey, Scott. Looking good. Um, I was curious, you were just talking about not being able to personally influence it. I've always wondered about that from Hall of Famers like yourself or Peyton. What is that feeling like where you truly cannot impact the immediate game? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely not a good feeling sitting on the sideline. And you know, that's one thing that you always could do as a player is look up at the scoreboard, see what you were doing on the court, evaluate, make changes, motivate, you know, do what we needed to do, being a player on the floor. Now being across the bench, you know, caught from the bench and screaming through my mask, trying to, you know, get it out, get the words out. But, you know, it's one of those things. You talk to the players. I, I have a really good relationship with all of our players. So after the game, you know, next day before shoot around, before practice, making sure that you have the communication and, you know, really just from my standpoint, all I can do is just say, hey, like, we need more. We need better. Like, defensively, we got better from the first couple of games. I mean, we've gotten better defensively, like Friday game with a better defensive effort down the stretch. We just offensively, we, we can't keep turning the ball over down the, during the whole game, not just down the stretch, but specifically in plays that we need to be able to score. I mean, it's hard to watch, but you just hope that watching film, communicating, just having a conversation that our players will get it. And then it's a significant day for you, the banner going up, the final player with that HOF added to the bottom, Hall of Fame, whatever. What will this day be like for you and your family? It's going to be awesome, Scott. I mean, this starting with last week, you know, everybody arriving in Connecticut and just the, the event, just the whole weekend overall was just, it was amazing. And then today it's kind of, you know, it's a little surreal. Um, honestly, it's surreal just going back, like bringing the banner back down to add the HOF and then putting it back up. But what a blessing, you know, it's definitely been a blessing for me, for my family, for my nephews who get to be a part of it, you know, my family and just in general, the one that can be here, the one that can. My dad, I've already talked to him this morning. He won't be able to be here today, but you know, just how proud he is of me and my mom will be here. So it's just, it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's surreal, honestly. Last thing for me, can you summarize what last weekend was like for you? Maybe something uh, unique that stood out to you about that experience or a conversation you had with anyone? Yeah, you know, unique. Um, I wouldn't even say unique. I think just, uh, I said this to Dougie a minute ago, like just being, in, it's an inspiration, you know, being inspirational. And, you know, I think the the biggest thing for me was family. You guys know how important my family is to me. Having to be out with COVID and everybody being separated from family, to have them there, to be able to go through that moment. And I'll be honest, like seeing Alonzo and Dawn and just what they, what the two of them have meant to me in my career and just my development as a player first and, and beyond, you know, I almost started shedding tears just because it's like, okay, like the moment is real. And I mean, you get a list of Hall of Famers, of course, Pat would have, you know, would have been there. That would have been my Hall of Famer that would have walked me to the stage. But to have two players and two people that continue to impact the game in so many different ways, be there when I made the phone call they were both like yeah we're in whatever whatever it is whatever the date is whatever we have going on we'll be there and we'll be there for you so uh that was the moment I think when I saw Don it was like man like I I almost started crying Don was like you better not die crying. you don't want to mess up your makeup <laughs> thanks Scott uh I think Lou Friedman LB helping us out there with this one uh, I got a couple of questions. Uh, you've mentioned Gallaudet in the past, and I was talking to the folks there uh, last week. Have you spoken there to, uh, and had any appearances there? And uh, do you feel a special kinship with the basketball team there? Can you can you repeat that? I'm sorry. I was I was. You have mentioned Gallaudet University before in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. Have you have you appeared there? Have you spoken to them? Because I was talking to some of the people there last week who 
did say that you were kind of an inspiration there. Uh, do you feel a special kinship with them? So uh, actually it's been a while since we uh, went out there and we did a, a clinic and I can't even tell you the year that we did it, but we did a clinic out there. Um, and uh, so I haven't really been in contact with them as of late. And you know, I think here just more, it's more, you know, some of the students that reach out and some of the families that reach out that I'm more in contact with, but obviously knowing what Gallaudet University is and what they represent and, you know, a lot of kids that are like me. So it's a blessing to be an inspiration and a blessing to be somebody that, you know, that they look up to. Um, I have another one, but it's, uh, I, I was actually in Alaska as the sports editor of the newspaper when you played there 24 years ago. Wow. 39 and 0 team. Actually, I was just rereading the story from that day and Pat Summers had very nice things to say to you uh, about you at that time. But is that the most exotic place you have played basketball in the United States or anywhere? Oh, most exotic. I don't know about most exotic. Uh, I think at that point in time, you know, being in, in college, definitely one of the most exotic places that I've been to. But I played overseas, played four, year, four and a half years in South Korea, Seoul, South Korea. I did half a year in Moscow, Russia, one year in uh, Gdynia, Poland, and two years in Istanbul, Turkey, and one year in China. So I don't know if Alaska would be one of the most exotic places, but I'm definitely trying to hit up one of the vacation exotic places. That one, I'm, wait, I'm waiting on that. A dress oh. in a glass case. Oops, go ahead. Go ahead, Lou. I was going to say, you, I don't know if that was a new outfit that you, that you brought out for the Hall of Fame speech, which did last longer than the five to seven minutes that you had said the week before. But Did you, um, rec did you record it? Is that, is that how you know it was longer than five to seven minutes? On YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it says 13 minutes on YouTube. <laughs> you know what? So this is, this is interesting. So they told us five to seven minutes. And, and I was talking to Alonzo, and Joe said, look, you have one opportunity to thank all of the people, and you won't even get to thank all the people that you want to. He said, you get up there, you take your time, and you take as long as you want. And I said, OK. So Joe gave me permission. You can blame it on Alonzo. He told me just, you know, because I'm like, I got to go back, and I got to rewrite. I got to start cutting some things out so I can stay within my time limit. He was like, nope. You go as long as you need to go. So blame it on Zoe. Leave them. <laughs> Thank you, Lou. Uh, Thanks, we'll Lou. finish up uh, JL Curvin from the Indy Star. Hey, Catch. Uh, hey, first, first off, congrats on your special day and your induction last week. Um, my question actually sort of touched on what you just talked about, your, your speech. Um, it reached out to a lot of people, especially people who can relate to what you had to go through growing up. Um, what ultimately moved you to say what you ended up saying? Well, I think the biggest thing, I mean, I, when I started writing it, I wanted it to be, I wanted to be real and I wanted it to be one, not just like, and thank this person and thank that person and thank, you know, like a whole bunch of thank you, which, you know, is kind of what your, your speech is all about. But I really wanted people to kind of have a view into my life and just, even for me, sometimes I look back and I look at my pictures from when I was a little girl and wearing my hearing aids. And honestly, I, I don't even think I could have, I know I couldn't have dreamed of where I've been and just all the things that I've been able to accomplish, the places basketball has allowed me to go. And so, you know, honestly, when I got up, I said, when I started writing my speech, I wanted just to make sure like I got every single thing that I wanted to say, but I wanted people to know my life. and. You know, I think that there are, like you said, JL, a lot of people that have experienced things, have, have been told that they think that they couldn't do, have been told or think that because I have a disability, I can't achieve whatever that goal is. And it's like, look, we can. If you put your, if you put your mind to it, if you work hard, anything is possible. And, you know, really, that, really that's what my speech was all about. Anything else for Tamika, everybody? No. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Awesome. Uh, we'll have the, the banner unveiling at halftime today. So thank you all again for taking a few minutes to talk with Tamika. Thank you, guys.